Now, as to how the state opens, that has a lot to do with how we plan. And many of these restrictions, if they are to be loosened, would mean that we could have events like benefits, parties, and of course, weddings in the not so distant future. But as Will Uick reports, even if restrictions are lifted, it will not be an easy task to plan a major event. I had an inkling. I'm like, hmm, maybe this is going to be it. It was it. And for couples like Jenna and Marcus, getting engaged was a joyous occasion. The planning of that wedding, on the other hand. It actually has been really difficult to find a, a rehearsal dinner space. Has been more strenuous than normal. Not only do you have to factor in all the normal things, you have this added level of, are we going to have to wear masks? Is everybody going to have to have hand sanitizer? Maybe that's our gift to everybody for coming to the wedding. Now as Governor DeWine is relaxing some of the COVID-19 restrictions, couples and people planning other retirement parties, proms, or benefits are feeling a little more than optimistic. I actually like almost fell off my treadmill when we heard about things kind of opening back up. This level of relief came over me. However, with many events pushed back from last year and new ones coming up. We are going to have a crazy year. There's a bottleneck for dates and locations. A lot of people from last year rescheduled to this year, so we're really busy. And then people are now going ahead and saying, Let's have our wedding. Let's not wait. And so we're getting those people too. Katie's advice is to act quickly, but be patient and flexible as you try to lock in your date and spot. I have a couple different plans. You know, we're event planners. We love doing this stuff. So as many plans as possible, we're happy. Jenna and Marcus didn't exactly get the date they wanted, but they know it's the occasion that's celebrated, not the date. And sometimes you just have to roll with it. We're going to roll with it until we can't anymore. And you know, if, if, Come, come August, they say you can only have 100 people at the wedding, then you get some awkward phone calls to make. If you're going to ask me advice for any brides that are getting engaged now, I would just say take it all in stride because everything's changing by the day. So control what you can and take a deep breath and see how everything else plays out. Hopefully our producer Monique does not get one of those awkward phone calls from her brother that uh, she cannot attend the wedding. But, you know, Jay, the interesting thing is I brought this up to my wife when we were planning our wedding. Why don't we have an A list and then as you start to get people saying we can't make it, have a B list and then you can invite people. And I brought it up to uh, both Jenna and Marcus. Why don't you guys do that for the out-of-staters? And then as you find out some of them can't come because of travel restrictions or flights delayed or whatever, you can have a local B list. So yep. uh, they thought that was a good idea. I'm interested. Did you do that when you got married? Or Listen, was it just send it out and then who can come can come? I got married in another century, okay? So times have changed <laughs> dramatically. But I will say, Will, that's a great idea because we did plan our daughter's wedding, which is a couple of years ago, and that's exactly what we did. We had a lot of out-of-town guests coming in. But when we sent out the initial invitations, there's a formula that you use to try to figure out how many of those will respond yes. Then they had a there's secondary. There's a percentage, right? Yeah, there's a percentage. Then they had a secondary B list of people that they would send those invitations to if their RSVPs came back less than they expected. That's how it works. Right. Will Hewitt, thank you very much. I was married in 1987, by the way, for the record. <laughs> that was so long ago. <laughs>